back to work the next day. Now, the Hungarian prime minister, and there's several of the uh, Eastern European countries who have recently joined the European Union, and they know what it's like to live under uh, deprived conditions. They were living under the former Soviet Union's thumb for a very long time, and they do not want to return to those harsh conditions. The Hungarian prime minister, Orban, said there is no fundamental right to a better life. You understand that? There is no fundamental right to a better life. He says there's only a right to security and human dignity. Why do we have governments? In the American system, we had governments we were created to protect our rights. Remember the Declaration of Independence? We have certain inalienable rights that among these are blah, 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 okay, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. And when they become destructive of those rights, it is our duty and our right to destroy or alter those governments. That's what the Constitution is about. That's what our form of government is about. That's what we said when we declared our independence. We said, this is the purpose of government. It is to secure our individual rights. Now, Obama was a constitutional lawyer. He understood and he actually talked about the difference between concepts that we've called positive rights and negative rights. Positive rights say that you have a right to something. I have a right to food, I have a right to shelter, I have a right to education, I have a right to all these different things. That means somebody has to provide it for you. That was not what our country was formed on. He knew that. Our country said we have a right to be left alone and we have a right to have a rule of law. Stay with us. We're going to continue with this when we come back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, as we've been talking about in this hour. We're talking about the massive immigration crisis in Europe. I pointed out it's like the barbarians of the gate with Roman Empire. We see that many people in Europe are willing to commit suicide because of a guilt that's been foisted upon them by political correctness. In the United States, we see in a recent poll, this is an article that's up on InfoWars, we're going to talk about that coming up. We have a third of Americans would support a military coup. This is how bad it's getting. The forces are there for a massive, massive disruption in the West. Because, of course, the West needs to be taken down for the globalists' Uh, plans of what they want to create. That's the only obstacle in their way for global governance are the Western nations. The rest of the countries are already too weak. They've already been taken down by uh, colonial powers, by massive exploitation, by continuous war. So now they need to import that unrest that they've been creating. And of course, these massive refugees that are flowing out of Syria, that is a direct consequence of our long-term planned foreign policy in the area. You want to talk about how we need to get rid of Syria and Iran? What about Saudi Arabia? They're attacking Yemen in a bloody war with massive civilian casualties there. This is a regime that beheads more people than ISIS does on a regular basis. You carry a Bible in there. You're going to uh, go to prison or worse, far worse in many cases. This is a repressive regime, but there are allies. Saudi Arabia. We aren't worried about Saudi Arabia. We're worried about Saudi Arabia's enemies. Syria and Iran, who are not currently invading anybody, uh, any of their, any of their uh, neighbors like the uh, Saudis are. But of course, we have to destroy that regime because that was our plan of operation, going way back to what Wesley Clark was talking about. He said, we've got this country, this country, and it was Syria, then Iran, and so forth and so on. They had their list. We're going right down the globalist checklist. They're executing the plan, checking off all of the boxes on their plan. We've been telling you about this, and the reaction from the mainstream media is like, what plan? I don't see a plan. Go read their books. Go read what Zbigniew Brzezinski said in 1970. The elites liked it so much, they put him in charge of the Trilateral Commission so they could consolidate the world governance into a European and Asian and a North American bloc and then consolidate those into a global governance. This is where it's all going. Can't you see the plan unfolding now? Can't you see the fact that the unrest that's in the West is, is something that is right before our very eyes? You need to prepare for yourself. At the very least, there's unrest that is coming in. Prepare for your own. We have InfoWars Life Select that's powered by Patriot Pantry, a new line of storable food. We've just introduced it. We have some great deals on it. I tell you, I was just traveling. We, we should have, of course, we went on vacation before this started. I, I should have gotten some of this stuff and just taken this with us on our road trip because a two-week food supply... $80, <laughs> that is incredibly cheap. A four-week food supply, $156. 
They're exclusive slimline totes. You can use it for very for space saving uh, packaging. All the packages have Ziploc, so nothing goes to waste. And there's no MSG, no autolyzed yeast extract. It's all U.S. ingredients. It's not made in China. This is made and packaged in the United States. It's not uh, grown or, or manufactured in China. It's not packaged in China. It's all packaged in the United States. It's got a 25-year shelf life and on and on. You can find this at InfoWarsLife.com. This is a special introductory offer. Incredible prices that we have right now on InfoWars Life Select. That's storable foods offered by Patriot Pantry. Now, going back to the immigration crisis, again, we were talking just before we went to the break about the uh, reports from USA Today talking about how in the established Western countries of uh, London and capitals like London, Madrid, Athens, Budapest, Lisbon, Warsaw, Geneva, Sweden, they have massive uh, rallies in support of the immigrants. And of course, we all understand what's going on there. We all want to help them. But nobody is addressing the root cause. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But then in other countries, and I don't know, uh, getting conflicts here because Warsaw is in Poland. Poland is one of the countries, the four countries, where there is massive opposition to this unlimited uh, inflow of, of refugees. It's the Czech Republic, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary. What they're concerned about is the fact, and here's the Here's the smoking gun again, the fact that this is being foisted upon them by the European Union. The European Union is trying to force nations into accepting unlimited amounts of these refugees. And they're not having it in those four countries. They're having counter demonstrations of tens of thousands of people in those countries. Look at what's going on in Germany. This is a, an article from Infowars.com. Private property expropriated by the German state for the benefit of of the refugees. Now, we've already seen this back in May. In Sweden, the Migration Board in May in Sweden evicted elderly residents from the Millmark Center outside of Torsby, according to a Swedish language daily newspaper. The residents were told that there were plans to make the property an asylum accommodation for refugees. So if you're a retired person in, in Sweden and they said that they are going to take care of you, they're going to give you these benefits, they've made that social contract with you, you depended upon that, and then things change and they throw you out of your home. Quite literally, threw them out of their home to make way for the refugees. That's one of the reasons they say that the anti-immigrant parties and even socialist Sweden are leading in the polls. And of course, the same thing is happening in the UK and France and Germany and Austria and other places as the current crop of political leaders do everything they can to subjugate their citizens, to treat their citizens as second-class citizens, to take non-citizens and make them the preferred people because they are the ones who are going to do what they're told. And, of course, it's going to foment unrest within the country, something that they desperately want to have. This is why you see Donald Trump soaring in the polls, because people understand where this is going. Nevertheless, you don't see Donald Trump or many of the others going back to the roots of this crisis. We cannot forget where this came from. This came from a Syrian civil war. The current crisis is a Syrian civil war, which we have been working on for nearly a decade. Starting in 2007, the U.S. was already in the process of engineering the overthrow and destruction of all prevailing political orders across the Middle East and Northern Africa. This is from New Eastern Outlook. Exactly true. The headline is Social Engineering 101, How to Manufacture a Refugee Crisis. And of course, we've been telling you this story at InfoWars for a very long time, how the U.S. has engineered this, how they've been meeting with people. For example, John McCain, we've seen all the pictures of John McCain shaking hands with people, as I point out here. He posed for pictures with terrorist leaders from Libya. Libya, and you know, 9-11 was the anniversary of Benghazi, not just the attack in New York. This last Friday, you didn't hear too much about that, did you? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe there'll be something in these latest Hillary Clinton emails, but uh, we'll talk about Hillary Clinton in, in a moment. Nevertheless, Northern Africa and the Middle East, that's exactly what they were saying. So he met with leaders in Libya, he met in Syria, and now one of these guys that he was meeting with, remember we talked about it at the time, we knew they were terrorist leaders. This isn't any revelation. They've now openly come out, and one of them is now the head of ISIS in Libya. That's not a surprise. We told you. They were already terrorists when he was meeting with them. 
It isn't blowback. It isn't even bad public policy. This is by design. You need to understand that. It would be bad enough if it was just bad policy. If we were just failing in our policy. And of course, the troubling thing is, is that we see many people, as, as Donald Trump began to walk back his comments saying, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm against people coming across the border uncontrolled from Central and South America, but we need to bring in those people from Syria because it's a humanitarian crisis. And then he started to walk it back. And he said, uh, well, if, if I was president, I think what Obama did wrong was he didn't finish off Syria to start with. All that would have done is make the crisis happen even sooner or in a much larger, we don't need to go to war with Syria. They're not attacking anyone. We are the aggressor in Syria. Let's understand that. We walked this back multiple times here at InfoWars. We pointed out multiple false flag attacks. Remember the sarin gas attacks we talked about? We said they're trying to start a war. It got traction. We had people in the military saying, I'm not going to fight for Al Qaeda. We had Ron Paul, we had Rand Paul, we had uh, Dennis Kucinich saying they were not going to be the Air Force for Al Qaeda. People understood what was happening. We stopped them once, we stopped them twice. They continue to press this, they created ISIS, and now we have this massive refugee crisis, and we're told that we have to let them overrun our countries. We need to stop the wars. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. We're gonna cover some news at the top of the hour. We're going to have also a report from Alex Jones uh, joining us in this next hour with a special report about the article that Paul Watson put up about a top feminist saying that all men need to be put in concentration camps. Uh, she hopes that heterosexuality doesn't survive. Yes, that's the brave new world that they're preparing for us. We have to understand that at the bottom rung of society, brave new world is uh, really what we're looking at. Aldous Huxley's uh, vision of an authoritarian government that operates based on controlling the population through hedonism and sensuality, the kind of dis distractions that those involve. Basically just keeping them doped up and happy with uh, uh, bread and circuses, essentially. If there's a group that opposes them, however, if there's some by the people who are awake, who are paying attention, who have issues of things, those people are going to get the Orwellian 1984 treatment, the boot in the face. So we see both aspects of those uh, novels, those uh, classic dystopian novels, operational today. Alex Jones is gonna be talking about the Aldous Huxley aspect of this. Uh, he won't be putting it in that, uh, in, in that vein, I don't think, but he's gonna be talking about this report of this uh, Idiotic feminist who wants to put men in concentration camps. It's just absolutely insane. Some of the other things we're going to be talking about in this hour, of course, are the massive numbers of people in America who would support a military coup, according to the latest poll. 29% of Americans' polls said they would support a military coup. We have another article, Psychopaths Are Running the World, says a former Marine. We're going to talk about all this as well as... A West Point law professor who resigned after posting a, uh, an article in an academic uh, area saying that we needed to attack anyone who does not support the war agenda. This is the kind of oppression against free speech and free thought that is very, very dangerous. And of course, it's interesting to see that they forced his resignation. We've had... Former West Point professors, remember the uh, professor a couple of years ago who was talking about the uh, hypothetical scenario in South Carolina where he allied the Tea Party people with Islamic terrorists. This is somebody who had been teaching at West Point for years and years. He was retired. This guy was just beginning to teach at West Point. We're going to talk about some of the things that he said. We're going to talk about the openness of the American people to a military coup, certainly something that I don't want to see. But um, there's also another military uh, story that's, that's laying here, and that is the massive mismanagement, again, of dangerous select agents that have been brought in. These are deadly viruses that have been brought in to be made even more deadly, even more easy to transmit. That's called gain of function. And we've had yet another shocking mishandling of this. This time it's the Black Plague as well as an equine, a couple of different strains of equine encephalitis. 
which are incredibly fatal, very high uh, rate of fatalities for humans who get it. Also, uh, Sanders is now leading Hillary Clinton.